start with Judy Bennett. And <laughs> she's uh, you've, already, you've already got stickers, so if you haven't got a sticker, then <laughs> Amen. And um, she's got fantastic portraits just over here, um, and this large portrait um, just here. And she's got a really fantastic sort of approach to um, mark making, mark making, but also um, just in her context as well, which she'll tell you a little bit more about. Cool. Okay, I'll make a few notes just to remind me what I'm talking about. Um, so the three paintings are fictional people. Um, I used to be um, a graphic designer and I work at uh, Celebrity Magazine. So one of the biggest magazines I worked on was Closer, the pink Celebrity Magazine, and NME as well, the music magazine. And I was constantly working on the screen and we're surrounded by flat images of celebrities. And um, whether it be on your phone, whether it's an iPad, on the computer, on the billboard, in a magazine, everything is shiny and flat. And I wanted to bring that celebrity into painting and that excitement of who is this person. So I feel that working, I work with handful gloss paint. Um, which is the, what you make the front door with. And um, because I love the consistency of it, the weight of it, the way that it handles, the way that it drips, the marks that I can make with it. And, and, I, and I feel that the shine of it reminds me of the shine of celebrity. And, and so then I wanted to make these sort of fictional characters that were my own celebrities. Um, and they, I was kind of elevating the nobodies into the celebrity world, which I was doing with the NME, um, you know, like this work with unknown bands, and we were constantly trying to make them celebrity bands. And um, I, I worked with Classic Rock magazine, and they'd be like, we work with three colours. If you want to make something a celebrity, it's either black, it's red, or it's gold, you know, and, and I think that the red background of your sticker really does make her a woman of importance. Um, so yeah, so they're fictional, I was a the graphic designer and now a painter. Um, and I, I, I'd like to also talk about how um, the mark making is really, really important to me and the drip and uh, the looseness um, I spent much more time looking and planning where the marks are going to go to the actual painting. I sit in front of the canvas maybe for about an hour or so before I make one mark and then, I'll, and then I shall step back. I, I work with the primary colours of household gloss, so I've got, you know, a yellow, and a blue, and a red, and a white. And I'm constantly pouring those big tins into something small and mixing it till I've got the right consistency of colour. And, and then I shall apply and step back. Um, and the drips are accidental. They're not planned. Uh, I will wipe away, but I won't. I will, I, 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 there's not, then there, it, everything is accidental within the work. And I feel that that gives the piece integrity because it allows the paint to be the dominant thing within the work. Um, I want, I want, I want you to look at it and see that it's a painting, that it's not a flat image. And if you look at it from the side, you can see the drips become three-dimensional. It's obviously a painting, and it's not, you know, it's not a photograph, and 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 that one of the major things to do with the drip and the mark making is to obviously allow the paint to be the dominant thing within the subject even before the person. Um, so that's that. Um, has anybody got any questions? Yeah. Cool. Do, do you imagine what they're thinking? Um, in their brain. Yeah. Well, like so, I'll, I'll rip out maybe sort of three or four images from fashion magazines and use those as reference to create this fictional person. But then I fall in love really with that fictional person or become their 
best friend or but then yes, I, I think about them as an identity and who they are and what's in their head. Yeah, and changing them. Absolutely. How interesting. And and just wondering because obviously I named them. This is Rufus, um, the guy with the black hair. <laughs> And this is Nikki, who's your sitter. If you don't want to sit and make sure you get one before you get back on the bus. <laughs> and and this is Andrea. And and yeah, I I um I think about Andrea because she probably lives in Hackney and she's really trendy. And and she you know she would be seen dead if her hair was is all messed up. You know her hair is perfect, yeah, except yeah. And um and and Rufus, I feel like he's in a band. <laughs> and, 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 you know, maybe he's with a drummer, and, and it, I, I also, because of working on so many music magazines, um, I, I use musicians' identities as well within the work to sort of, to sort of outline the era that I'm painting in. So, you know, there's a bit of peacocity in him. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, do you have a mix medium to the housing? Big colours? Do you mix medium? Um, she's got beeswax in her hair. <laughs> um, and um, you can see, if, when you go up close, you'll be able to see in the black of it, there's, there's some texture in there. Um, but no, I tend, it's, it's just household gloss. I, I even am a little bit nervous, not nervous, but I'm a little bit control freak of. Um, putting too much turpentine, uh, it would only be a real sort of thing, or if the brush was so clean and it would might have a bit of turpentine left on it, then it would go into the work. But no, nothing's poured in, it's pure oil. Uh, has anybody else got any questions? Yes? Yeah? In terms of technique, do you paint straight on the canvas or do you do Oh, that's a good question. Sure. Uh, the question was, do you uh, like draw or do you just go straight onto the canvas? Uh, absolutely, I don't. I, I draw with paint. Um, I um, when I first started out, maybe sort of, I don't know, ten years ago, fifteen years ago, I was, had a sketchbook and I'd be sketching everywhere, and 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 I absolutely loved those sketchbooks because they were so full of passion and energy. But when I transferred them onto the canvas, it was gone, and it was fake, and it was not. It was just it, that energy was lost, and and so I now just go straight onto the canvas with a bucket of paint, and will draw on the on the canvas um, because I want that energy and passion to be within the big piece, and not within the sketchbook that nobody sees. Fantastic, brilliant, thank you so much. So